So let's take that example, okay? You go out, as you've all had, and you're just in a venue, and suddenly you're like, I don't belong here. Like, that's the first thought that kicks in. You might think, I'm confident on the way. You might be hyping yourself up with music. As soon as you enter that venue, your mind goes to analyzing threats. Anyone have that? First thing you do, analyzing threats. Like, okay, where do I stand here? Who here has more value, more status than me? Do I belong? Am I allowed to be loud? Who might I offend? Ooh, are they staring at me? Am I dressed okay? What about me, 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 me? And suddenly it's you versus the environment. Instead of, oh, these are my peeps. We're all on the same team. Let's hang out. How's it going? It's, there's the enemy. And we literally view everyone as the enemy, by the way. And what we do is, how can I use some of the social tips to win this enemy over? <laughs> and that doesn't work, okay? Not only will it not work because you're in a very competitive mode and they just feel it, but because you're so caught up in your head, there is no soul. And this is huge. This is the big difference in terms of you going out and just chatting and it just clicks versus you chatting and it doesn't work. Sometimes you say the exact same thing and it doesn't work. Why? There's not that soul. And this is the stuff it's really hard to put into words, but think of music, right? You can have someone who's very logical, very smart, in their heads, and they're just analyzing everything. They're like, let me take notes, let me practice the perfect timing. Yet when they play the song, it's like a robot, right? If you've done like music programming, it's like you've just programmed in the notes, and it's like, dun, 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 dun. Perfect timing, perfect notes, but you just don't connect. There's no humanity in it. Right? It's just too logical. There's too much of you. There's a great quote from uh, Osho that goes, the more of you there is in your art, the less perfect it is. Oh. If you're very creative, if you're trying to think too much and make it too perfect, too much you, too much ego involved, it stifles true genius from coming out. And what he says is, the more you can remove yourself, you analyzing everything, what are people going to think? Is this going to work? Remove yourself and let it come out. It's pretty much like something from the other side comes through you. And that's really what it feels like when you're in that flow state. I'm sure you've experienced it. You're out just chatting, having a blast. You're like, wow, it's like something else is coming through me and this feels amazing. Now you could go spiritual and he says, it's the universe acting through you. It's God. It's something supernatural, which is why when you hear beautiful art or you see like a painting or a song where someone really let it shine through, you're like, that is you know, beyond human. It is. It's something that came through the other side. Whether you choose to believe that or not, we all connect with it. That's the soul. But to get in touch with that soul, you got to get in touch with the body. You can only emotionally recognize it. It's not something you can logically recognize. And, I mean, we've been showing it for years. It's like, look, this is, for example, an interaction where there's not much soul. And it's like, hey, how's it going? It's just very flat. It just doesn't click. Here's the soul. And you're like, Oh, and that's what's missing. We're trying to learn, for example, socializing logically. It's pre-verbal. It's not the words. The words are simply the vehicle for that person to experience you, for experience that soul, for you guys to connect and create something emotionally together. Now, in terms of some initial practical things you can do, okay, number one, it's learn to laugh again, okay? A challenge I would give anyone who has trouble laughing is go to comedy shows. Make it a challenge. Like, this next week, the next two weeks, every night, comedy show. That should be your priority. If you can't go in person, watch it on Netflix. Watch it online. Go on YouTube and literally watch stand-up on repeat until you feel that real laugh just burst up. Because at first, like I talked about before, you're going to be in your head just analyzing. Like, oh, this is boring. Screw this challenge. Until it finally clicks and you'll literally be by yourself in front of your computer like, Ugh, comedy, and then like a little chuckle like, ha ha. And you're like, what was that? Where did that come from? That's your soul. That's you taking up more space in your body. And keep doing it until you genuinely laugh. And you can even analyze it. Like, what do I laugh at? What type of comedians? What type of humor? And you learn how to push those own buttons. How to get in your body and how to experience joy, you could say. Another thing you can do, which really helped me, by the way, and this sounds really weird, is take your shirt off more often at home. Swear to God. Even if you want to start losing weight, take your shirt off. Right? Instead of just sitting there on your computer like, done with work, time for the porn, the jack off, the porn, shirt off. Why? Because it forces you to be aware of more than just your head. Otherwise, it's just you in your head and then the clothes cover it. And it's like, oh, it's just the clothes. Take your shirt off. In terms of losing weight, it helps too. Because we mentally eat. That's why we go for the McDonald's. We're like, oh, it'll taste good. And then you eat it. You're like, oh, 
that was a bad idea. If you stayed with the full effect of the food, you'd probably be inspired to eat a little differently, right? But we just don't feel the rest. We're like, mental, mental, need the escape, need the escape, McDonald's. If you're there and you're like, McDonald's? Ugh, <laughs> maybe not, because you see more of you, okay? You can also go to yoga. People hate this, like, yoga? That helped me tremendously. Why? It's all about body awareness. You'll be there and it's like, breathe into your leg. And you're like, how? <laughs> breathe in. <laughs> like, how do I do that? It'll force you to become more aware and more present and notice the different subtleties. You know, breathe in doing this movement. It's all about body awareness and do it in a class. Most of these places will give you like a free week or a free trial. Go do that. Now, if you want a really wacky one, and this is one that I actually got um, from Fred Dodson, and it's in Transformation Mastery Academy. Do this. Go home and schedule in four hours of your day. Four hours where you're going to do nothing. Hour number one, you eliminate sight. So you're going to sit, say, wherever you live, and you're going to put a blindfold on, and you're going to go blind for one hour. And you're going to start noticing, huh, how do I feel being blind? Taking that away, you're going to get in touch with more different subtleties and nuances inside of you. Hour number two, you can take the blindfold off, but this time you eliminate hearing. So you can put like noise canceling, headphones, anything to just not hear, and then just go an hour without hearing. Hour number three, you eliminate touch, smell, and taste. So you can wrap your hands with like, I don't know, like towels or paper and then tape. So you literally can't pick anything up. No water, nothing, block your nose, and go one hour without touch or smell or taste. And hour number four, all of it at once. And trust me, that will get you extremely in touch with the body. If you're someone who's in this apathetic, logical state, just living up here, you will be forced to get in touch with the nuances. And actually, if you want another one, a cold shower. But not in the way that we usually go about it, where we're like, it's me versus the cold. <laughs> All right, you're like, then you jump in and you're like all tense, like, ah, and it's like this battle. Challenge yourself and see if you can relax into the cold. And this is really hard. You put that super cold shower and you're just like, relax my body, relax my body, and just embrace it and start feeling, you know, more intense sensations. But that's if you're someone who's like, I can't feel no matter what. You will feel the cold. And if you ever catch yourself thinking, you know, I don't feel anything, tune into the subtleties. What does that feel like? It's impossible to not feel anything or you'd be dead. If you're sitting there like, I don't feel anything, I don't feel anything. It's like, what? Are you dead? Okay, it's impossible. So tune into what that feels like. Even if it's like a little tingling, tune into that. Just getting more in touch with the body, what's that gonna do? It will actually give you more bandwidth. Because instead of just being only in here, like focus, like the mind, the mind's running it, what are they thinking? Some of it now goes in the body, and guess what? There's less of you up here to filter what's going through, and more of that genius comes out. Now, another perspective to really sink into is to understand that most people, okay, can only see arm's length. Beyond that, they don't see anything. It's nothingness, and even within arm's length, it's a blur, right? We all have this, you're getting ready, Say it's like a big date or a big day, you have an interview, you're like, gotta look sharp, right? You're, maybe even this event here, you're like picking out your clothes, saving your best shirt, I've saved it for tonight, iron it, you go in the mirror, you're like, my skin looks really nice, inflammation went down, yeah, looking good. <laughs> Everyone's gonna notice this, and you go out, and no one notices. When's the last time you, do this audit, really zoomed in on someone? Like really saw them, and you can do this. Look at your neighbor and really zoom in on their face. Notice all the little subtleties. If there's a little pimple, the, the beard, the hair, every little detail. And you're probably gonna feel a little uncomfortable doing it too. You're like, well this is very invasive. Right? No one does this. We think they're doing it. We're like, oh they're gonna notice a little hair thing, like say I even do this, they're gonna notice the little, the little hair thing. No one notices, you're just a blur. No one's gonna be sitting there, like say you're out, you're like, they're judging me, and someone's sitting like, just locking in, like, oh, a little wrinkle. By the way, part, part of reticular activation system, and this is really key, do you guys understand what real magic is, illusionism? Okay, so magic, as presented by illusionists, 
is a, tr is a sort of a, an art form on your reticular activation system. They, you know, somebody who's doing sleight of hand, you might think they're actually, you know, putting the coin to a different dimension. But not to burst your bubble here. <laughs> They really are putting it to, so, so what it is though, is that they're actually, they're, they're, it's true artistry. I mean, my, my mentor, Mystery, he was a true artist and is a true artist on handling that reticular activation system. He can do things where you're gonna be jaw drop. You might even start crying. It's so powerful when he's doing magic. And what's happening is an art form about the reticular activation system. What you'll begin to realize is that what you can see, that little pimple, that little dot, the average person, there's too much stimulation going on for their reticular activation system to even see it. I mean, if, if you can learn an art form to control the reticular activation system to where you can make it look like things are disappearing, you're levitating, things are flying, things are, things are levitating, if you can do that, are you telling me somebody's noticing the pimple that you're freaking out about? Or is what they're gonna notice is your general demeanor, which is one where you're in com competition, you're paranoid, you're insecure. That's what they're gonna notice. Yeah. I can remember I was at hip hop dance class when I was like 22, didn't work, didn't learn the move. <laughs> but the big takeaway that I got was when they said, when you're working on your moves, everyone's looking at themselves. Everyone's RAS is on themselves. So it doesn't matter as much what you look like as what you think, but the vibe, what they feel, the openness, the present energy, the self amusement, the togetherness, the collaborative frame. That's what they feel. That's what you're really wearing. And I can see this from years of when I recorded myself and I thought I was wearing something that looked really cool and I, see, and I had a great time and had a great time with people. And then I went home, I looked at the video of myself. I'm like, I look ridiculous. I mean, I probably may look ridiculous now, but you guys are like, you looked ridiculous, right? But, but, the, but the main thing is this, they don't really notice. I've been losing my hair for years. I go out, if I say I'm bald to someone, they're like, you're not going bald. In my mind, I'm like, I'm kind of going bald. I mean, I think I am bald at this point. <laughs> and they're like, no, you have hair. They'll think that because your vibe is good. Mm -hmm. When you guys look at someone who's really charismatic, maybe they're short. When you guys think of, say, Jeff, do you guys think of him as 5'7"? No. What does your reticular activation say Jeff is? How about Elliot Hulse? Do you think of Elliot Hulse as 5'8"? Do you think Elliot, when I met Elliot, I thought he was going to be nine feet tall. <laughs> I, I was like, man, what's up? He's like, I carry it well, brother. I was like, you do. <laughs> I still think you're nine feet tall, but you know, I still, I think you're nine, I'm looking you in the eye, but I still think you're nine feet tall. That's impressive. So what you basically have is that it's, it's, the, it's when you, basically when you don't care and you're free, you don't fall under the same category. You're in a different energetic realm. You're not in that category. Even people who are insecure about whatever demographic they're in, there's usually different types. Are you in the demographic and you're like, oh, I'm in this demographic, oh, I hate that or do you not care and nobody else cares at all? No one cares at all. Everybody loves you and thinks you're awesome. Do I care that I'm in the balding ginger demographic? I mean, as someone to go bald, out of anything you could be of going bald as a man, there's not a lot worse than a ginger going bald <laughs> because I'm so pale that I don't look like I'm a shaved head cool guy. I look like I have cancer. <laughs> When I shave my head, I literally look like I have cancer. And yet when I shaved my head and I went around, I did it for seven months, it, life was no different. It was the exact same. You could even argue that some of the media fiascos Julian's been through, some people might never leave their house again or me, but he doesn't care and no one else cares. He gets no problem. Does that surprise you? Does that make the room go a bit silent? Does that make you think how you'd feel if you had the weight of all these attacks on you? How would you feel? But when you don't care about it, life continues as normal. That's why the most important thing is not to be continually micromanaging your reputation, micromanaging what people think, all up in your head trying to control everything. We have what's called release muscles and control muscles. How often are you really in your release muscles? Do you even know what your release muscles are? We're trained so much in our society on control muscles because society is training us to make things fester, to be dense and fester and compound till they explode. But we wanna release, we wanna learn what our release muscle is. And what we release no longer continues to bother us so much. And also we tend to transcend that thing that we released. Going back to the soul that I was talking about before, that's what you're saying. It's like, we don't see the soul with the eyes and with the mind. You feel it. It's the same here. No one's gonna be like, hmm. They feel, it's like, what do I feel hanging out with this person? Is it, ah, oh, light? 
fun, passionate, or ugh. And you could be saying all the right things. You could be analyzing everything about me, just whispering sweet things into my ears. I'm out of there. Okay, you got to get rid of that. And also, with social media and cell phones, I mean, you don't even notice your friends. How often do you really notice your friends? Say you go out to, for, for lunch with a friend. Do you actually sit there and be like, staring at your friend? Or are both of you just kind of ca cha casually chatting, looking around, cell phones are out, like, oh, yeah, my phone, yeah, we're out. Oh. It's like, do you lock eyes with your friend? Like, are you guys friends? You guys friends? No. Well, lock eyes right now. <laughs> Let's do that. Just lock eyes with a partner right now. Whoever's next to you, lock eyes. What's more, there's probably a lot of tension there. <laughs> now here's the other catch too, when you're playing this competitive state. And I'll tell you a story of a guy, I won't say his name, he came out to hang out with me and I was with a couple friends. And it was my first time meeting him, he was a friend of a friend and we were all out having fun, uh, just joking, laughing, and he shows up and he just got out of work, so to be fair he was like, kind of in his head, didn't have the best day, and he was extremely competitive. He's like, where do I stand? And immediately, you can see how they engage in the conversation. They're like, so, how's the business going? I'm like, ah, oh, it's going great. It's like, oh, me too, so this is uh, how much I made this month. I'm like, oh, okay, I thought we were just joking. He's like, yeah, yeah, and he just stuck to it. I'm like, back to the joke. He's like, oh, okay, but back to this. Just trying to play this thing where it's like, we're all on the same team. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to keep qualifying yourself. And in the vibe, everyone felt it. It was like this weight, this person just pulling it down. Why? Because they were trying to be cool. And let this sink in. By trying to be cool, you're automatically not cool. You cannot become cool in the paradigm of trying to be cool, in this competitive paradigm. The way you become cool or high status is by opting out of that. You're either at the bottom, it's like, I'm low status. What do I do to be higher status, right? And you'll see people a little shy, but then you'll also see people who are say, I got all the skills and uh, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> feel that handshake? You feel my voice? Yes. <laughs> and it's like, whoa, like, it's way too much. And they'll walk it by like, <laughs> sit down. Control muscles engaged. No fucks. What's up? <laughs> I'm just chilling. Literally, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you can believe it. I don't care. Right? Is this an alpha position? <laughs> That's right. It's just how I roll. Me too. Literally. That's how I roll. Is this cool? Is this high set? It actually is pretty cool. Well, it's cool in a way where it's a joke, but you'll see people take it a little too seriously, or they're like, if there's an armrest, they're like, I must take the armrest, and like shove the person, like, dominate, one for the high statusness, right? Or if someone's ordering, it's like, I would like that dish, and it's like, oh. It's like, it's way too much, and it's too try hard, it's not cool. Or, or another way to look at it too is that you have a situation where if somebody's apathetic, they have no social status, then that's a level up from sitting there just derping. I would, if, if I'm my son and he's like, yeah, this is how it is, ha, yeah. I would rather that over passiveness and just being like. It is a step up, yeah. Okay? It's a step up, but is that your last step? No. Is that the final destination? Yes. No. Okay, so things like <laughs> that. Everybody, everybody go, that. Okay, so, okay, so it's great from a certain standpoint. That's why we go through phases. Control muscles are there for a reason. That's your control muscle. Those are there to help you. But then there's a point where they hurt you. Say, every truth, every truth. is about a half truth. A half truth. There's, a there's a limit to every paradigm. To every paradigm. So there's a point where it's helping you. There is that point where you try to go, and it's good. It's actually better than just sitting there derping. But then there's a point where you'd become so natural, you'd become so cool, and you're not getting to that point because you're not learning how to let go. Anytime that you're teaching social dynamics, you've got to walk that fine line because on one level, you don't want to tell a guy who's a derper, oh, just let go. He's like, already doing that. I got that. I got that. So at a certain point, that actually can be very, very powerful. It's a very good lesson to say, you know what, I'm gonna like just get more tense and take it more seriously. That's very powerful. And I hope that you all have a phase like that. 
But like I said, there's two types of muscles. What's the first type? What is it? Control. 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 What's the second type? Release. 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 And so most of you guys have been stuck in control for years. And you're so uptight, it's so jammed in there, it's like a jam muscle, and just to get it to stop, you need to massage it out. You need to learn how to release. You've gotta learn how to get it to stop festering. Another way of viewing it is, there's all these, you could say, social skills or status rules, right? And you learn about them, you're like, hmm, you know, if I stand like this, it's very assertive, right? So you start playing by the rules, learning about the rules. This is high status, this is low status. This is what people want to be around, this is offering value, this is low value. However, eventually you reach a point where you're above the rules. Above those little social skills, high value, high status rules. Why? Because the person who's still trying to play by the rules is still low value. For me, it's like, you know what? I can sit here and even just sit like this. And I own it. I'm that cool that I can get away with staying like this. You know what? I can even talk like this, and I still get away with it. I don't have to dominate. Notice you know why? Because I don't care. There's a difference. I'm above it. When he when he's talking like that, so cutting off. When he's okay. Uh, when he's okay. <laughs> when he's talking like that, this is key. It was just so, so important. I want to mention it. When he's talking like that, he sounds categorically different than a lot of guys who talk like that. A lot of guys will talk like that, and they're like they're like, hey, so what's up? And it doesn't sound like an imitation. That's not an imitation. So at a certain level, even when you would act low status, it doesn't look low status anymore. It's the difference between being and doing. Say it with me, being and doing. So when you're being that guy, when you have had a real transformation, you're on a different level. But it's okay to play with different mannerisms at first to get the hang of it. As long as eventually you own it, integrate it, and let it go. The other thing to really notice is just is there heaviness? Is it a big deal? Any signs of heaviness or big deal always linked to me, 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 the ego. Okay, you can write this down. Ego equals effort. When there's like this effort, you're like, oh, I'm in my head or even in the way you talk. It's like, yo, slow it down. And of course, to get to the cause, you gotta dive into it and process it. But even say you're out, don't take yourself so seriously. Remember too, no one notices you. No one's following you and analyzing everything you do. You know, we all think like, I'm the hero of my movie and everyone's movie. That's not true. I'm the hero of my movie. You're the hero of your movie. You're the hero of your movie. Everyone here, it's like, these people to you are just background characters. You're a background character to most people. You're not Brad Pitt walking into a venue. And that's how we act. We're like, fans, fans, what are they thinking? Are they judging me, the pimple, the, oh, fans. And then you walk in. Fans, where do I stand with all the fans here? They're all staring and judging because I'm so famous. You're not famous! Yeah, the reality is much more grim. If only they were judging every pimple. Right? If only they were looking at you in a negative way. You'd actually be more relevant. <laughs> but there's a freedom in knowing that you're okay. And for some, it's even hard to get noticed when you say hi. I see this with shy people. They walk up and I'm like, hey, go say hi. And they're like, hello? And even going and being like, hello? the person doesn't notice them. And they're like, oh, they didn't want to talk. I'm like, no, they didn't notice you. <laughs> Even going up and saying like, hello, it's not enough. Now, this can sound a little sad where you're like, oh, they don't notice me, but it can also be extremely freeing, right? If all eyes are on you and you're like, oh, can't make, <sighs> so, so you have to like fart, right? Can I fart? No, Brad Pitt can't fart, but the background characters can fart. No one's gonna notice them farting off in the corner. That can be you. <laughs> You could be that crop duster starting today. <laughs> There's where the video cuts. <laughs> That's the lesson. Like this program is such a game changer. The way everything's structured and the material, it's been already even for me, it's just been, I'm noticing a crazy change in, in the way that my whole life's like playing out. What you put together is just incredible. There's nothing like that. I'm just jumped like a million levels. It's just been a complete 180 for my experience of existing. That's awesome. <laughs> it's just been so huge in terms of so many of the things I'm finally understanding and realizing and epiphanies I'm having. What you do is a huge inspiration to me and I think it's one of the most beautiful things you can give to another human in this entire world. Do 
save my in life man i'm telling you that's this is real man sometimes all it takes is just one person who believes in you find people who are where you are in life and model them work with them i would not be here if i didn't have people who held me accountable wow <laughs> <laughs> i just felt a click and things are changing. This program was just top notch. Seriously, like this is a masterpiece. This is, this is perfect. Everything, the way it's set up, the live calls, like all the support from the coaches is incredible. It's, it's been nuts. I just had my test joy. This was the best decisions I ever made. Thank you for creating something wonderful like this. This program was Phenomenal. This program was uh, was amazing. This program has definitely changed my life. I know for a fact I'm in the right place. This is exactly what I was expecting from the program. It's been uh, spectacular. I feel really lucky to, to have found you. Thank you so much, Julian. It's, uh, it's worth every dollar.